In this video, we consider forecasting with a stationary AR1 model. The AR1 model is given by yt equals constant term delta plus theta yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. And we assume that the stationarity condition is fulfilled, so our coefficient theta is numerically smaller than 1. Additionally, we make the usual assumptions. T goes from 1 all the way to capital T. Epsilon T is IID, which means 0 and variance sigma square. And finally, our initial value, Y0, is given. Now we have a sample of specific time series up until point capital T. So that's our end of the sample. And based on this sample, we can estimate the model. We can estimate the unconditional mean given by mu. And now what we're interested in is doing out-of-sample forecasting. So given that we are here, and given the history of the time series, what's our best prediction of the next period? Capital T plus 1. We're interested in the point estimate, so that would be our best guess, best forecast. And then we want to derive the variance of the forecast. We want to show that the forecast converges to the unconditional mean of the stationary AR1 process. The optimal forecast of yt plus k, given the information set at point t, which contains the history of y up until t equal to capital T, is given by the conditional expectation of yt plus k conditional on the information set IT. The variance of the forecast is given by CK, which is the variance of YT plus K given the information set I capital T. And we can derive that as the variance of the forecasting error. So that is T plus K minus our forecast of t plus k given the information set at time t. So this is just the expected value of the forecasting error squared. Note two things. The estimated residuals from t equal 1 up to capital T are in the information set. So these we can calculate based on the data and the estimated parameters. Second, the conditional expectation of epsilon t plus k conditional on the information set it equals zero for all k greater than zero. So that is based on the information set at point uh, at time capital T, the expected value of all future shocks will be equal to zero. Now we can derive the point forecasts. going to do it first for horizon of one period, so y t plus 1 given t, which equals the expected value of y t plus 1 conditional on the information set i t. Now we can simply plug in which equals which equals delta, the first part, then we have theta multiplied by the exp conditional expectation of yt given the information set at time t, and we note that that, of course, is just equal to y capital T because that is in our information set. The last term here is zero, so we have an expression now for the point forecast. We can do the same, forecast two periods ahead, which is just the expected value of yt plus two given the information set at point t. Now if we plug in, we get, which we can write as point t. Now this equals delta plus theta multiplied by our forecast one period ahead. We can simply substitute in from the equation above, and we get 1 plus theta multiplied by delta plus theta squared yt. So that's the expression for the point forecast two periods out of the sample. Finally, we can generalize this to k periods ahead. yt plus k given t equals the expected value of yt plus k 
conditional and the information set a point capital T. Now it's quite easy to show that this equals 1 plus theta plus theta squared plus all the way to theta to the power of k minus 1 multiplied by delta plus theta to the power of k yt. As k, the forecasting horizon, increases, yt becomes less informative about the forecast t periods ahead. Or forecast k periods ahead converges to the unconditional mean, here defined as delta divided by 1 minus theta, as k, the forecasting horizon, goes to infinity. Next we consider the variances, and we first derive the forecasting error, so that is 1 period ahead yt plus 1 minus our forecast condition 1 in the information set at point t, capital T. If we plug in, we get minus delta minus theta yt. So this was our minus the forecast. And we note that this equals epsilon t plus 1. So this is the error we make in prediction. We have no information about which value the epsilon will take on. If we do the same two periods ahead, we get delta plus theta yt plus 1, epsilon t plus 2, minus constant term minus theta, yt plus 1, given t, so that's our forecast. We note that the two constant terms cancel out. What we're left with is the epsilon t plus 2, and then we have theta, the difference between the actual value at t plus 1 minus our forecast. So this is our prediction error, which we have just found above. So this was epsilon t plus 1. We can generalize this k periods ahead, and we get that this equals epsilon t plus k plus theta epsilon t plus k minus 1 plus all the way to theta to the power of k minus 1 epsilon t plus 1. So this is a sum of the shocks uh, in the entire forecasting horizon. We can use these to derive the variances which we define first c1. This is the variance of the forecast one period ahead which is just equal to the variance of the forecasting error one period ahead, which was given by epsilon t plus 1. And we get that this variance equals sigma square. Second, this is just the variance of the forecasting error two periods ahead. If we plug in epsilon t plus 2 plus theta epsilon t plus 1, and we get 1 plus theta square multiplied by sigma square. We can generalize this k periods ahead, and what we get is 1 plus theta squared plus theta to the fourth power, all the way to theta 2 k minus 1, multiplied by the residual variance. So we note that the forecast variance, ck, converge to the unconditional variance. So ck converges to the unconditional variance defined as gamma zero for the forecasting horizon going towards infinity. So again, as the forecasting horizon increases, the information we have today becomes less and less important, and at the end, our best prediction of the mean is the unconditional mean, and the best prediction of the variance is just the unconditional variance. So this would correspond to the forecast based on the empty information set. Finally note that for practical purposes we will replace the true parameters by the estimated parameters and based on those we can simply compute the estimated forecasts. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.